Nate. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon, and good evening for our uh, audiences in the UK and the US. And I know we have some Dutch uh, registrations, so welcome. Um, my name is Nate. Nate Jung. I'm the partnerships manager at Vestoria. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're delighted to have Dave uh, from Digital Empathy um, to present this very vital, timely topic on the importance of using your website to attract new veterinary talent. Um, anyone who's hoping to meet Rob today, unfortunately, Rob has to attend to a family emergency. But Dave is equally charming, equally qualified. <laughs> You're the vice president at um, Digital Empathy, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Thanks, Nate. Hi, hi, everybody. Great to be here. Um, Vice President of Growth at Digital Empathy. So I, I love the topic of today's meeting here. Um, I work with a lot of practice partners on recruiting through a website. So can't wait to talk to you all. Great. Well, I guess I have to first, first of all, ask you the uh, customer question since the pandemic started on Zoom calls. Where are you in the world and um, where do we find you? Yeah, right. I'm out here in the Ethernet. Um, so we're actually, mo much of our team is, is here in San Diego, California. So we're on the West Coast of the United States. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I long to uh, be in the US at the moment. Uh, I myself, I'm based in London, uh, as our UK team, and our US team is based in Austin. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's very funny because the topic is actually quite relevant to Vestoria. Because since 2020, we've hired, we've doubled in size in terms of the US and UK office. Half of them have been veterinary professionals working in the practice. So mm -hmm. somehow, I guess you would have recognized, you, you, you'd recognize that there are people leaving the profession at a time of rapid, you know, pet, pet ownership growth. So. Yeah, so I think this topic is, is very timely and uh, we've done a survey at Vestoria helping people to, helping us to understand how we can best help. And all, literally all the practices where 90% have mentioned that staff shortage is their number one pain. So I'm just wondering, Dave, have you been receiving similar comments, feedback from your clients? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that maps very much so to to our clients' experience and, and more broadly to the industry experience that I come across. And what I would share just to kind of kind of bring my insight into that is with the practices I've spoke to over the last probably 12 to 18 months, probably nearly 90% bring up hiring right away as the number one most critical need in terms of either they have an, a vacancy and they need to fill it or they foresee uh, an impending vacancy that they want to get ahead of, or that their business, as you said, the industry that's doing so well right now, everybody went out and got a COVID puppy or kitten. There's so much demand right now that they want to grow their business and grow into this moment. Um, and, and recruiting is the right limiter there. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, obviously I think that the best solution would be to have more vets and nurses. And if we could just suddenly create more, but we can't. So I think, you know, it's great that we are taking care of what we're able to do to attract new talent. And, you know, the website, like there are loads of different types of websites, you know, that practices use. Um, can you, before we go into how websites specifically help recruiting, can you just maybe remind us of the function of a veterinary website in the modern age? Sure, yeah, uh, it's a great place to start. You know, I would say to answer that question, I want to take one step back and, and talk about quickly like what it's commonly thought of as. And I think what's commonly thought of the function of a website for a vet practice is um, a place to put up your information. You know, what's my contact info? Where's my phone number? Um, what, what do I offer in terms of services that people might want to utilize my business for? And I think that's the conventional way that websites were thought of. And as a result, everybody kind of built them that way and companies started building templated designs to cater to that expression of information. And now if you're a pet owner and you go online, all vets kind of look and sound the same. And so what I would say right here at the onset, and this is I think a great place to start because everything we're gonna to talk to downstream really feeds from this, is the real goal of the, the website is, is to differentiate you. 
to really hit on what makes your practice unique and special and to communicate itself in a way that speaks into the listening of your ideal pet parent. Because I think commonly the trap that a lot of web marketers will fall in is they think that their job is to get you quote unquote more clients. And that can be partly true, but I think the truth within that statement is you want more of your favorite type of client. You want the client that lights you up, thinks like you think, wants to do right by their pets, you know, all of those great things. And the way you get there online is with a website that communi communicates you at the deepest, most differentiated um, level. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, differentiation, keywords. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> write it down, everybody. So you know, when it comes to a website, you know, we, I'm not a, a web designer, but you know, obviously you are the expert in this. Are there specific things that should happen with specific pages? For example, like the home page and the team page, can you maybe expand a bit on how you guys approach, you know, the use of those pages? Yeah, I, I can. And, um, and, and we'll, we'll look at some examples, I think in a little bit here, but just to keep it high level and conceptual, you know, the, the real job of, let's start with the homepage. This is a really powerful piece of real estate that can do so much for a practice. Um, again, it has to go deeper than here's who we are, here's where we're located, here's our phone number. If, if we're really successful in developing a good team page, what it ought to do is connect with, and I'm going to get a little into the, into the mind science-y language here, but connect with the limbic mind, the, the emotional center create a real emotional connection. Um, and I wanna take a step back here and, and make a quick comment. You know, there's a common phrase or a common like stat that I've heard in hiring where, the, where a typical hiring manager, they really make their decision about a candidate in the first 10 seconds. And it's been tested, it's been studied and, and that holds true. And, and what that tells us is that our hardware is really, really good at helping us to make a decision quickly that our, um, logical mind is just catching up to, right? Like we like to think that we sussed it out, we thought about it, we reasoned it out, and then we arrived at this choice. But the truth is, is we probably made our decision in the first couple seconds. And so the home age, its job is to really influence those first couple seconds in a deep and powerful way and answer what is the most fundamental question being asked by a pet owner or a prospective hire looking at your um, practice to see maybe I want to join you as a DVM or maybe I want to bring my pet in um, as a customer. Yep. And the question that those both people are asking is, can I trust you? Because if we're seeking a relationship, if we're seeking an engagement as a business um, or as a new employee, you've got to have trust. And so I think the number one thing is the homepage has to transmit trust. And then to your second part there, I'll kind of go right into the team page is the job of the team page is to take the baton from the homepage and run it, advance it more forward, right? Go a layer deeper. You, here's us as a business homepage. Who are the constituent members of that business? That's your team page. And then who are you as a person? What are you into? What do you like? What are your hobbies? And, and really take me there. And I think if those two pages do those two things, you probably solve 95% of your troubles online. Cool. I guess so. That's maybe when you sort of detected the link between a website and recruiting. And is there a a clinic or is there a website that we we should trust? Do you have a good example to show us what trust <laughs> looks <should>. like? <laughs> sure. No, that's a great question. Um, let me let me go ahead and turn on a screen share here. And I think what I've got for you is an example that really really makes all of this stuff very real. And, and this is the experience of Long Lake Animal Hospital. Now, obviously, this is, this is a client of Digital Empathies. And I love Long Lake. Um, the ownership there, Jeff and Lisa, spoke with them last year. And I think their story is a familiar one. You know, this is a practice that, like so many out there, they've been trying to hire a DVM for quite a while. I think it was over a year at the time when we met. And they just weren't getting traction. You know, the, they weren't getting a lot of... Um, a lot of hits or a lot of really quality connections out there with possible candidates. And I have to say, it's such an amazing time. I know it seems like so many headwinds on the hiring front, everybody brings it up, but with so many practices like turning over staff and there's so much availability, I think it's a great moment of opportunity for practices who are stepping into this moment powerfully with a plan 
and taking decisive action. And so that's what Jeff and Lisa did. Um, we got in communication, um, got to know who they were, really learned their story. And then we brought that to life on the website. And what I would share with you, and I love the story, was you know after a year or so of trying to recruit, they set the new site live, started you know putting the link out there in their hiring assets. So you know on their job boards, linking to the site, linking to the careers page that I'll show you in a second. And within the first 30 days, I think they had not only a candidate, but they had made an offer and they found their DVM that they've been searching for for over a year. And that candidate. I love this, said, yeah, you know, I reached out to you and I was excited to have this conversation and I really chose Long Lake because of what I saw on your website. And that was just like the, you know, we're all yeah, high-fiving yeah. and we're so happy for them. So it's a great story. You know, what, I also think it, the reason that maybe they've been trying to recruit for a whole year but couldn't find anyone, maybe the candidates looked at the old website and didn't want to go further. It, it's possible, isn't it? I'd say entirely possible. You know, there's, I guess there's no way to know definitively, but it definitely holds water. You know, if, if you're not, um, if you're not projecting in a way that shows how forward thinking you are or how positive the team is and the culture is, you know, I think of it like that person, you know, if I'm on your website and it feels like, you know, 2001 and, and I'm, you know, I'm a current, you know, I view myself as a cutting edge vet, you know, a top candidate. I, I'm probably looking elsewhere. I think that I think that holds a lot of water. Cool. And yeah. and you said there this long uh, this client Long Lake and they had a careers page built within the website. Okay, that's quite. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think it's very common for SaaS companies like Vettori. I think we have careers pages. I I did I didn't know that Vettori Hospitals also did that. Or do you do you have some kind of some study done around this space, careers page and the... Uh, yeah, uh, well, probably not an empirical study, but what I would share with you from my own experience, really being on the front lines of this for quite a while now, is historically a careers page on a veterinary website um, was almost non-existent. And I mean, I, I say this as somebody who has looked at vet websites every day, day in, day out for years. It's just not a thing that ever really was um, common. And that's the thing that we're really seeking to change because you know we're in this unique moment and it is such a pervasive challenge, um, but it boils down to connecting two groups of people, you know, vets with the ideal practice employer. Um, and so what has to happen in the space of those two things is just better communication. And I think more just from the heart communication um, to connect those those two those two camps, um, yeah. I think, I think you know. I just speaking from my own experience, job seeking, because you can go on the aggregated sites. Uh, in the UK, we use like Indeed or Read. I, I don't really know what, what you guys use in the US. And mm. chances are, when you click on a job link, for me, if you can apply right there. Mm -hmm. It's it's usually a job kind of that wasn't completely thoroughly written out, but some jobs actually takes you to that company's website. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get a whole sense of the company and also a careers page that's kind of a bit more substantial. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can be a bit more creative in how you want to gather information about the candidate. So I've always, like, it, there's like an instant credibility attached to you know, that sort of job ad, you know, even on an aggregated site, if it takes you to a website that's beautiful, credible, I think yeah. it's definitely a lot more attractive. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I mean, let's be honest, it's 2022, right? So anybody who's really in a job seeking position today has probably grown up or had a large part of their adult life in this technology. And so seeing it fully expressed, integrated in, in, as, um, in as nice a way as you can package it. I, I love the word you use there, credibility. It builds a ton of credibility. You know, even if I wouldn't use your forms, the fact that you have integrated forms speaks so much to you, your competency, um, what you are projecting as important to you that you would avail this to applicants. Um, and yeah, you know, I think the, the careers page should take everything that the homepage and the team page 
uh, is expressing about a business and then just localize it around the hiring experience and really speak to the candidate who is right for your business and let them step forward. Great, yep, yeah. fantastic. And I know you, I can see you've opened up a few tabs. What did you want to show us? Sure, yeah. Uh, so, well, here's, let me just take a, a quick scroll through Longlegs homepage. I want to kind of just let you feel this, and I'm not going to read this. We just don't have the time for that today, but I encourage, you know, go back and give it a look. It's really nice, really speaks from the heart, but the design and the interplay here, we're really trying to create an emotional journey for the viewer that sets the stage for them, you know, team page, careers page, we'll come back to those. But Talking about a team page. Wow. That's, wanna... that's really pretty. <laughs> yeah, loads of, uh, yeah, I wish I knew how to do that, to be honest. Yeah, that's really pretty. Right, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, the design is important, but really, you know, the takeaway here is, you know, I don't know anything about Noah and I might not read anything about him, but I know he likes guitar and I can connect on a human level with that interest, right? Totally. I mean, it, this just projects, you know, what you see here, people instantly form an impression about this practice. And, you know, having maybe having been through a terrible two years of working in a practice where everyone is burnt out, when you couldn't even get a break, but to see people with spiny faces and you know, very healthy with a yoga mat. I mean, that projects health and mental health and and all this. So it clearly says that you know, if you work here, yeah, we're gonna be mindful of you know how your of your experience and maybe choose us. You choose a better workplace culture. So I think, um, yeah, that that's really impressive. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. Thank you. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, hiring, it's just another way in which, as people, we're just trying to find our tribe, you know, we're trying to find groups that we can assimilate with and feel safe and feel in contribution to some larger effort bigger than ourselves. Um, so yeah, I, I love I love what you said there, Nate. Um, and just, you know, to show that every team is its own kind of fingerprint or, you know, snowflake, one of a kind. You know, this this team page is going to show you different things than the last team page, um, but it's it's no less important. It's the people, it's who they are, and um, them having fun with their own kind of personality, their own spin on things. So, cool. Um, yeah. Mm. Nice. Before we go further, does anyone have any comments about what you've just seen? Feel free to put it in the chat. Um, yeah. We'd love to interact with you as well, um, but like yeah this is um i think you 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 can see like at least i know in the uk you see some very basic websites that look that really look like one of those um hello world sort of uh, computer <laughs> science 101 uh kind of websites and it's incredible how you know i remember when i first joined Vestoria and there were people who still didn't have a website because uh, you know for Vestoria to work and obviously you need to it needs to be somewhere right. and uh, and there were people who didn't even want to have websites and now the discussion has gone from oh do I need to be digital to like what are the best solutions um you know within the space um it's like it's a, a really funny start me this may not be related to the website, but um, I just thought I wanted to share with everyone. So in the UK, King's College London did a, did a research. So 45% of the, of the 75, over 75s, are new internet users. So basically, we used to talk about, you know, you need a, a website, you need all these, like, incredible automation and, and apps and um these days i think it's even gone beyond apps everything is cloud-based and kind of you know browser-based so it's um we used to think oh you need to do this to connect with a millennial generation of pet owners but now everyone's a millennial <laughs> you know it's uh, it's incredible how the COVID pandemic has really kind of pushed forced everybody into being digital savvy 
So I think uh, it's even more vital that like we get to, you know, be, I guess, you know, educated on, on things that we didn't think we needed before. Yeah. Yeah. Such great points there. Um, I mean, we could spend another whole Completely. webinar on just what you said. And I love, I love the, uh, the expression, everyone's a millennial now. That's, uh, there's so much truth in that, you know, like I think COVID probably compressed about 10 years of digital transformation into the space of 18 months. Yeah. It brought it all forward. And so now society is riding up this S curve, dramatic increase of tech adoption. Um, and it's here. And I just share with you, you know, what you said about everyone's a millennial now it reminded me my grandmother, she was 83 and she was Facebooking and pinging me and poking me and sending me all these things more actively than any friend I had. And so, so it's there. I mean, it's just, it's the metaverse and, and we're all, we all have these digital um, spaces that we like to congregate in. So yeah, it's, it's here and you've got to be playing at a high level if you want to win. Cool. Um, I think um, there's something else you mentioned. You mentioned something around online forms on the website. <laughs> so I, which kind of forms um, do you mean? Can you show us yeah. uh, maybe an example? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nate. So I, I think this is such a needle mover. I'm going to pull up an, another great example. And, and I like this example. And it's fitting because it's, it's, it's a, a client that we share uh, with Beth Story and Digital Empathy. Um, did I know? <laughs> did I just know you were going to show that example? <laughs> I don't know. Is this, we have this planned. Who knows? The audience is <laughs> up to wonder. Uh, no, no, I think this is one of those happy accidents, but I was, I definitely had this tucked in my back pocket. I wanted to bring it out in the space of this conversation. It seemed to really fit very naturally. Um, you know, this, um, forms can mean so many things. I mean, you can have basic intake forms that don't map into the practice software and they can be helpful. They can be time savers. They can, you know, mitigate the amount of inbound calls that the team is having to sift through and have the same conversation over and over and over. And if you could take that burden off of your team, I think that really boosts morale and it just makes things better. But what if we didn't stop there? What if we could map into um, a practice management software system like Betstoria? And I love just how like it's right there. It's so accessible, friendly, here to help. You click and then boom, now we are, we're getting in. Yeah. Um, so, and, sorry, and, Dave, yeah. just wanted to quickly correct a something you said. Um, so Vestory actually is not a practice management software. It's what you see here is the booking thing and it maps into, you know, Cornerstone, Evermark, um, the, the practice management software. I think maybe it was just a misspoke, but I think, yeah. I think half of our attendees are digital empathy clients and half are Vestory clients. So I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Oh, sorry, thanks for that. Yeah, missed over on my part. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's about having the ability to to connect in and just streamline this process for your customer. First off, uh, I think being able to to get through so many stages of the process this much more easily um, is quite nice. But then also from the staff's perspective, to take this off of them to not have to make this be an in person transaction paper forms once we get in the in the practice let's get this done in advance is is really nice yeah, thank you so much for for showing this example um yeah. i think um and also this look i love this website because it just looks so striking like everything is so coherent and people know exactly what they're supposed to do on this website and you know i um i think what we touched a bit on differentiation so i think the keyword here is if you have a candidate who is looking, you know, researching around, they would absolutely choose a practice that they think has a better culture than one that even that might even be a bit closer, but it eventually kind of, you know, the, the, the trade-off is, I mean, this is something I read in the, um, in Vet Times and people say that the new graduates are lambs to be slaughtered as soon as they join the practice. I mean, that's, it's so, it's brutal. It's brutal, isn't it? It's, um, so <laughs> I <doing> think, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, but I mean, yeah, that's why I think, you know, if you're a, you know, a practice that's looking to sort of be as appealing as you can, you know, on the web, inside the clinic, I think, you know, it's absolutely important if you don't have the resources to do a website like this, which is 
is really, really exceptional. But obviously, I think, you know, there are websites that are quite decent that maybe someone can do, um, I guess, you know, with Wix or something. But if, if you do want to kind of differentiate yourself from the common herd, I think that it's vital that you, it's, you know, it's a good investment because the benefit would be long lasting because uh, even with, you know, even for Vesura clients, they might be using online booking for many, many years, but for online booking to really work for you, your website needs to attract a lot of visitors. And then, you know, that can convert into customers. And the more, you know, appointments that are booked online translates into fewer phone calls for you. So I think, you know, it's, it's fantastic that we have, you know, digital empathy and Vesura clients on this uh, webinar. I think it's, um, you know, we're all doing our best to mitigate the problem at the moment is, you know, recruitment, but, you know, and ongoing problems, too many phone calls, ongoing problems, workplace culture, abusive clients, and all those things. I think um, it's, it's, um, it's really great that, um, you know, we are, I think we're like doing our best to kind of bring solutions to you. So, um, yeah. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with us, Dave? Well, you know, first off, I think everything you said, I, I, I couldn't couldn't say anything better. You know, I think you really got your arms around the whole issue right now. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's an investment. I think that story is is a great investment. And I think having a, a strong web solution to tell your story. I mean, gosh, if, if we can attract, let's say you're a practice trying to hire a DDM. I mean, let's put a price on, on achieving that. You know, like what is that worth to the business? It unlocks all that future growth, helps alleviate the bandwidth constraints of, you know, your life, your sanity, you know, it helps you as an owner to achieve greater work-life balance. I mean, to a certain degree of these things, you, we can't put numbers on, uh, maybe we could, but you know, um, yeah, the value there speaks for itself. And I'm just excited to, to have had this opportunity to speak with you, Nate, and speak with our shared communities. I think this has been awesome. So just thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Like we, we're always looking, you know, to, I guess, enlighten our clients with, you know, interesting and, and, and educational content. So thank you so much for being part of our webinar series. Um, does anyone have any questions? Please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, if not, we are almost exactly on the dot half an hour for this webinar. Um, so no questions. We will be sending out the um, recording um, to everyone here. Um, obviously, if you have any questions about the content of the webinar and or what we do, you know, respectively, Vesuri and Digital Empathy, feel free to reach out. And um, yeah. Thank you, Dave, and thank you everyone for attending. All right.